You are tuned into TCS podcast. Hello and welcome everybody. Today we're diving into something that I in particular am very very excited about. Hearing is believing a podcast on podcasts. How fantastic is that? Featuring TCS Research, I'm thrilled to be celebrating podcasts on a podcast and I am not alone in this celebration because I have with me Niranjan Pedneker, principal scientist and Dr. Sunil Kumar Koparappu, principal scientist TCS Research. Now this podcast is going to be all about how podcasting is an emerging field for research in the audio space and all about how audio analytics can be applied to it both our guests today are the perfect people to talk to because their experience with ai and data analytics especially in the field of audio and media is sure to lend some interesting perspectives welcome to the show niranjan and welcome to the show sunil so i'm going to dive right in because like i said you both are the perfect people to be talking to today and i have a lot of questions so podcasting is the radio's millennial avatar and an incredibly savvy medium i know this for a fact being on the other end of things it's easy to produce broadcast and consume but i'm intrigued about the other side of this entire situation what are some recent scientific advances that have actually led to it becoming such a viable medium of communication if you look at the technology it's recording technology audio production software internet mm-hmm. uh, blogging of uh, different kinds because that led to podcasts whatever right. you write in blogs it essentially comes to uh, comes in the form of audio sometimes mm-hmm. and uh, there are conversations as well so if you look at it uh, the technology has been there uh, for a long time it's been put together in an interesting manner and i think uh, adam curry it was uh, in mm-hmm. uh, 2004 uh, he created something called ipodder and uh, that allow sort of uh, radio broadcast to be sent into uh, ipods Right. and then iTunes took over they did their own stuff and they uh, allowed native uh, support uh, in the mac os uh, for par- podcasts then steve jobs showed in one of the addresses the famous mm-hmm. addresses in 2006 uh, how to make a podcast using something called garage band uh, yes. which is uh, provided with the mac os and then people just i i mean they just took off and uh, uh, by 2013 i think uh, there were about a billion subscribers uh, to apple podcast and then uh, uh, by then you also had spotify this that and so on mm-hmm. so a lot of has been built a lot has been built on top of what already existed right. but it's just an incredibly easy way to do this what has been added technologically is the scale the mm. scale at which at which uh, podcasts happen these days and the scale at which uh, things can be relayed to people and uh, the number of people listening to podcasts the number of uh, podcasts which are there the content where it is stored how it is stored uh, the various ways of processing that content and making it available to people uh, the uh, you must know i mean you must be using that uh, speed button many times that instead <laughs> of 1x <laughs> just put it on 1.5x put it on 2x Three years. Nice. Let's nice. just test it. So uh, you might have seen all that, and to make it sort of flawless, that's where most of the technology has been. Very interesting point you just brought up there, which was also the the journey of the fact that there's always been a foundation. Which in you know on my end as a creative person, I've realized that it is kind of just uh, radio has been the building blocks for it. Yeah, I think uh, to add to what Niranjan said, uh, I think uh, while there is no specific advance in technology as such, mm-hmm. I think if I had to choose one or two, it would be to me it would be audio codecs. Uh, okay. these are uh, what have uh, enabled more data compression so that you can pack lot of data into small amount of uh, uh, time uh, without sacrificing the audio quality uh, nice. this i think has done one good thing that uh, even geographies which have uh, let's say poor uh, data transmission possibilities uh, mm-hmm. because of cost or because of bandwidth Mm-hmm. there also you can actually send this kind of data without any sacrifice in the audio quality how is some of the state of the work um state of the art work that we do in the field of audio analytics actually useful for podcasts how do we take um statistics and analytics and apply them to the medium itself 
podcast is essentially what their audio signals and their signals uh, which can be analyzed in various ways uh, you can find a variety of things such as whether this is music it's a mixture of music and speech it's speech it's um, uh, two people four people five people um, who is talking when and so on and so forth right uh, what recent advances have also allowed is to take this audio and mm-hmm. then tran- create transcripts or, uh, automatically so uh, you essentially take audio and generate text out of it what is being said who is saying it uh, and that kind of uh, stuff is uh, uh, being used a lot how does it matter uh, if you see so there are a variety of things so these days um, on the one hand you have really long podcasts but at the same time there is an opposing force in the market uh, as generations change uh this is the yes. generation of tldr too long didn't read so you have yes. to give a, <laughs> a small summary of whatever has happened so summarization of podcast is also an important thing you cannot say that everyone would like podcast to be 3 hours long uh right. if if there is a 3 hour long podcast can i compress it in half an hour can i compress mm. it in 10 minutes can i still get uh the right kind of things in those 10 minutes so that i at least know what's going on in that podcast right so right. uh those are the kind of things that you do when you find out what is going on in the podcast so that that's one problem which i think uh has been enabled the other problems which have been enabled that uh, as you are able to process speech uh can you take that speech and convert it into someone else's voice Mm-hmm. uh imagine a podcast with a voice like this and you can't really go on for a very long time can i change it to amitabh bachchan's voice for example and uh, can i just make it into something which is uh which is personalized so personalization right. is another factor uh which is enabled by uh, some of the stuff uh, that is done uh, in that audio analysis uh, you can even place ads at point certain points if you want to uh, mm-hmm. you can place ads around it a variety of things are possible because of the kind of analysis uh, that is possible at this uh, very moment yeah and i have to say thank you for that lovely in, in addition to the information and all of the knowledge that we just dived dove into thank you so much for the sneak peek at your theater theater background it really you know <laughs> jumped out on us wonderful and both of you touched upon this idea of summarization and it's true because with these changing attention spans it is important that the message of the content still stays intact and reaches its audience as intended just taking off on the aspect of time and it being somewhere in the foreseeable future This is definitely a newer medium as compared to others um at least in the way that it exists today. So new things always come with their own challenges. Do either of you have any perspectives on some interesting problems that we're actually exploring in this field? One thing that comes to my mind is uh, having what one would say as the emotion voice, empathetic voice. For example, right. today you have a consumer who is in a certain state of emotion. now you cannot have a podcast uh, being very chirpy and uh, against his emotion so probably uh, there are ways in which you can detect the current state of the emotion of a person and based on that probably uh, taking on what niranjan said you could change the emotion of the voice of the podcast i do not know whether this is bizarre but maybe i would like to listen to the podcast in my own voice Oh, so, okay. <laughs> so, so each of us could be listening uh, in our own voice. And uh, uh, the other thing is, uh, today the language of the podcast is sort of fixed. But the kind of right. work that we are doing today, speech translation and things like that, maybe uh, a podcast is produced in one language, say English, for whatever reason. And uh, then maybe I would like to listen to it in Marathi or maybe Absolutely. Tamil. Absolutely. Yeah. And all this can be done technologically very fast without uh, much. Uh, so today technology is available that uh, or at least it can be managed in such a way that these things can be made possible yeah. there are few other problems say one thing that we are really interested in is the grammar of media uh, okay. for example a, a movie has a three act structure uh, which was given by someone like uh, aristotle uh, uh, years ago in his work poetics that there, there are three acts and then you use that to analyze movies so even if you're using an ai program to do it you also consider this kind of uh, the grammar inside that comes from the actual media it comes from people who make movies right. similarly what is the grammar of podcasts can we think of why 
people get engaged into mm-hmm. a podcast can we think of why people get engaged into certain voices what will make people uh, resonate more with things because whatever we said about generating podcasts artificially you can't consume our podcasts artificially machines can't can't sit and listen to podcasts and be happy about them right isn't it it will be yeah. us who would be consuming uh, however they are produced i mean in whichever way they are produced we would be consuming and therefore knowing the human part of it i mm-hmm. think is the most important thing and it often comes at the very end of any technological advance you work right. on the technology you work on making it scalable you work on compression algorithms etc but the human in the loop the, the human in the center of all this has to be acknowledged at some point in time and that's where you find grammar niranjan let me just take that a step further because it's interesting you talked about the grammar of uh, certain formats and actually understanding them given our experience working on other media segments and formats like video for example can we actually you know borrow from our knowledge of these segments and uh, you know learn from our understanding of these segments and use those to address the problems in the podcast space yes absolutely you can do that and uh, i mean a few pointers to uh, that are that humans like attention to be created and released mm-hmm. tension okay. to be created and released that's there in music that's there in drama that's there in uh, the theater uh, movies etc everywhere what is it in podcast can you artificially raise the tension and release if someone just talking like this and just goes on and on talking like this and there's nothing that is happening and so on can you artificially fix it so that there's a pause created in between like i am creating right now can i use this kind of a pattern of tension and release in podcasts to make them more engaging uh, so these are the kind of things that we can certainly borrow from uh, other uh, media types now it's interesting because no medium is really anything without its audience but um so what are some of the areas that we need to improve um to enhance user experience is my next question yeah i think i think uh, user experience is something that definitely can be enhanced there is no limit to what you can do mm-hmm. uh today you could be actually wanting to listen to a podcast as if you are sitting in a park what does a park means probably a breeze or the birds chirping and like a still footstep of a jogger in the park and things like that right. Right. that could bring a freshness to the podcast you know a podcast could be technical it could be uh, whatever it is but you may want to have a sense of experience in that form or maybe you're sitting by the river and then trying to actually uh, listen to the podcast maybe the breeze from the river or the fish which are jumping in the river you may want to get that thing right. and all this happening while you're sitting at your home okay mm-hmm. the experience is as if you are in the park or by the river but actually you are sitting at your home and this i in my opinion can be very very uh, wonderful yeah very Now, powerful to to allow immersive experience right correct correct yeah correct. and also these things are not um, futuristic or something there is lot mm-hmm. of uh, current technology that allows us to mix uh, these kind of audio events uh, yeah. realistically into podcast so things are there now the only thing uh, is uh, whether uh, these are something that people would want is uh, mm. uh, you need to test it out you just need to have immersive podcast versus non immersive podcast and see how people respond to that finally as uh, niranjan okay. said it is the consumer who decides you know what he wants to listen how he wants to listen there is one more uh, point that i would like to touch upon can podcast give uh, this i mean similar expressive power Mm. uh to a wide variety of people uh such platform is not yet there and it probably might come in future and uh, just like tiktok uh, has been around just like maybe instagram has been around uh mm. here is where you consume things in a very short uh, span of time right clubhouse right. is one one thing that i have seen which is slightly close to that that people just get together yes. and chat uh mm-hmm. the chats could be relayed um in a local community they could be available for uh future consumption uh it's not that they just get together and it it just uh, fizzles out after the after the uh, the meeting is over mm-hmm. um so those are the kind of things where uh, certain advances could be observed in future interesting it's a lot of food for thought actually niranjan to give power 
both to the producer as well as the consumer yes and um, again we very conveniently <laughs> fallen into my next question which is that podcast audiences are actually growing all the time especially in my personal experience during the past 2 years of the global pandemic the podcast market really saw a boom right what does this increase in size considering both of you touched upon the idea of scalability what does the increase in the size of the listening audience mean for both the research and scientific community yeah i, I think uh, scale of course definitely is something uh, that goes without saying which mm-hmm. means uh, automatic creation of rich content becomes uh, very important so how can you create podcast of interest uh, automatically without uh, anybody actually trying to uh, create the content and right. personalization of the content is of course very very important uh, i i think the material could be the same thing but put in a different form which is possible through the technology that uh, happens to exist today and uh, if you look at um, uh, if you try and uh, make a podcast uh, everybody starts uh, podcasting then i think uh, search search becomes a very very important aspect how do you search for information that you are looking for yes. which uh, most of the uh, social media sites make it very easy for you because uh, of the way you like uh, other uh, uh, data maybe they make use of that and try to project something I think these are some things that uh, are uh, open problems that uh, researchers and scientific community will sort of try and address over a period of time. So I think uh, as uh, the extent grows, how do you control what messages are being relayed? Mm-hmm. I'm not saying you have to control them, but you see on Facebook, you see on WhatsApp, uh, there is plenty of fake news, there is plenty of information, misinformation which is around. Mm-hmm. Uh, how how do you really tackle that problem when it comes to podcasts because i believe that podcast is a great tool for education and uh, the more reach it has for education uh, it can do wonders there is something right. called cognitive load uh, which is less when your video is giving you something visual feed is giving you something different and your audio feed is giving you something that's where podcast excel they decrease your cognitive load you could be doing something else and you could still be listening to uh, an entirely different thing and 100% that, yeah i that agree. is where that education aspect of it comes but mm-hmm. it also is fraught with uh, uh, stuff such as the messages that we get on whatsapp yeah. uh, which are entirely uh, uh, they could be fake they could be propaganda they could be uh, unverified and so on and so forth all those things could probably be uh, taken care of at an early stage if we go oh, wish to go in that the education the direction of education mass education so to say wow i mean both of you have brought so much to the table today i am genuinely feeling um i'm really excited to just think about everything that you both have spoken about today because it is such a different perspective especially for someone like me uh, i am you know on the creative side i do the hosting but um to actually hear all about the thought that can go into this medium to make it as big as it can be and as useful as it can be it was really lovely a big thank you to both of you for taking the time and actually sharing so many of your insights and your thoughts about podcasting the future of podcasting and what a, what better way for us to celebrate podcast than this thank you so much thank you.